Hey everyone, Dane here. It's been a little while since I've had a chance to do a retro video. Been super busy just in my life, uh, playing music, working, all, all that stuff. Um, but I thought, hey, you know, I ought to put another video together. And uh, recently I picked up a couple of, uh, you know, pretty cheap uh, Mayflash arcade sticks from Amazon. I was just looking for a couple other USB uh, sticks that I could use with my super gun. And, uh, you know, got them. And they're like fine. You know, they're serviceable. They weren't like great, you know, uh, but but they were usable. But it got me thinking like, hey, might actually be kind of a fun project uh, to uh, get some like real like good arcade parts and swap them into one of these uh, Mayflash arcade sticks. And it's actually really easy. Uh, what gave me the idea is I just was reading some of the comments uh, in, in the reviews on these. And people were saying like, hey, it's really easy to do. Uh, so I bought some aftermarket parts and uh, swapped them in and really had awesome results. So today I wanted to, uh, you know, take uh, one of these standard uh, arcade sticks uh, from Mayflash and uh, customize them a little bit. Uh, you know, and I ended up with something kind of like this, it looked really cool. Uh, but yeah, there's no soldering involved. You know, this is actually something that is really easy to do if you're brand new uh, to, um, you know, modifying stuff, you know, electronics, all that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm actually trying a new setup today. I'm using a uh, different uh, camera setup here. Uh, one I was hoping to look a little bit better. Uh, I think it's got a little bit better video quality. Actually, just uh, using my phone. Um, so this is new. You know, let me know in the comments uh, what you think of the video for this. Uh, but yeah, so here we have uh, you know our our Mayflash arcade stick uh, stock, and uh, they're really easy to get into. So let's uh, flip it over and see what we have here. So it looks like just some standard screws. Um, I like using a magnetic tip uh, screwdriver. I find it's just a little bit easier uh, to use to get into, uh, you know, any electronic stuff. And it does help, uh, you know, when you can just sort of pull something out like that. You don't have stuff falling all over the place. Yeah, getting into the back of these is really easy. Just a standard screwdriver. I'm just going to go in and pull all those out. All right, there we go. Uh, so the other thing that I found with getting into these, once you get the screws out, uh, you're going to want something uh, to get in here and sort of pry this lid off. It's kind of set down in there. Uh, I just used a pair of my um, curved tweezers here. Uh, I put it in sort of right where the plug comes in, like this, and uh, was able to use that to sort of lift lift that out till it sort of comes free. This one's actually being a little, a little more stubborn than the last one I worked on. All right, so you know what I'm gonna do? Let's get in here with this one. There we go. All right, so our floor plate is is off. And uh, you can see uh, inside the thing. Now, if you've never gotten into one of these before, it can look a little intimidating uh, just by, you know, virtue of all the wires in here. But <clears throat> we're going to work on, them, on things kind of one thing at a time. And I found that that keeps things uh, really manageable uh, when you're in here working on this. Uh, First thing that I like to do when working on these is we're going to take the joystick off just because it makes it much easier to work on the thing. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, 
uh, we are going to need to um, cut uh, the 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 bundling here for the wires. So definitely be careful when you're doing that. Uh, but I just used, came in with my side snips, worked one side under that. And then you just need to make sure that nothing is in the way. So you can unclip uh, your cable tie just like that. All right. And so you can see in these that basically all these white wires here are from the joystick. And that is what we want to take out first. Um, now all of these joystick wires connect to this uh, board down here. And the nice thing is they actually have um, plugs that are pretty easy to get at to remove. You can see right there. So we're gonna do that first. We're just gonna get in and start pulling those four plugs. And each one of those uh, corresponds to uh, one of the input directions on the arcade stick, up, down, left, and right. All right, so we now have our joystick wires free. So we're just going to unscrew uh, the base plate uh, that holds that in there. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. We actually want to take the ball of the joystick off first. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able to slide this out. So to do that, you're going to want to hold on to the ball with one hand. Use a uh, flathead screwdriver, the other. And break that free. All right, now once that's loose enough, uh, you can just hold on to it with your fingers on this side and just finish unscrewing the ball top. There we go. So that's off. Oops, and hit the camera there. <clears throat> okay, so now we want to remove our floor plate. Or excuse me, our joystick plate. And you definitely don't want to lose these screws. We'll be using them again. One's being kind of stubborn, doesn't want to come out of there. There we go. All right, two more. All right, last one. Uh -huh. That's not quite out, out all the way. I thought it was. Yeah, I was just being stubborn. All right, so now... That pulls out just like that. Super easy. And the uh, shaft cover and protector uh, will just fall right off. So you just set those aside. And now your arcade stick will actually lay flat. So uh, it's a little more convenient for when we are uh, in here working. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, some of the pieces that we got. Okay, so here's our box of arcade parts. Uh, we're gonna need uh, some of these uh, connectors uh, in order to hook up our new joystick when we get to it. And then we just have a bunch of uh, button housings here uh, that are gonna replace the blue ones. We have our new Sanwa JLF uh, joystick right here. That's pretty cool. Let's pull that out. But yeah, this is a really nice Sanwa 
uh, joystick. It feels really tight and responsive. And I believe I even bought some um, octagonal restrictor plates, um, which are really good for fighting games. You can see here that this restrictor plate uh, has four main directions, right? So it'll sort of stop the movement of the joystick uh, at those four cardinal directions. But you can also get another restrictor plate. Let's see here. I think I've got one in here. Uh, and you can see with this restrictor plate that it actually has eight directions, uh, which can be really helpful for fighting games. I'm not gonna worry about putting one in for this. Um, I'm probably gonna end up using this stick for shooters and stuff mostly, so, uh, but we'll see, who knows. It's really easy to swap out uh, once, you, once you've done it. Uh, but yeah, so there is our Sanwa JLF joystick. These are all Sanwa buttons. Here's our actual uh, new buttons. Um, you can see the uh, SD in there for San Juan Denshi. Uh, these are really cool. Really like the look of those. And uh, we also have our new uh, ball topper to go with it. I kind of like the idea of doing like a two tone uh, for these. So like, you know, top row one color, bottom another, and then sort of have that reflected uh, in the ball topper here. And yeah, the rest are, are just these uh, button housings. All right. And I got most of these parts from um, Paradise Arcade Shop. And um, what was the other one? Let's see, I think I've got mine. Oh yeah, Arcade Shop. That's right. So um, those are great places. You know, if you want to customize uh, your arcade stick, um, either, either of those are going to have all kinds of different... Uh, Bull tops and bat tops and different colored buttons and tons of different joysticks and really everything you could, you could ever want uh, for customizing an arcade stick. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this cable tie. There we go. And that kind of frees us up to start working on these buttons. Now I like to kind of uh, have the colors correspond to the color of the uh, of the ball top. And so this one is green at the top and it sort of fades to yellow. So we'll do a top row of green buttons and then a bottom row of yellow buttons. Um, one of the things that is gonna make it a little easier to get at some of this stuff is to actually just pull um, your power cable uh, off to the side. Uh, just And really, realistically, we can even just pull that. So maybe we'll do that. Let's just pull our power cable there we go let me just get that out of the way don't have to worry about that right now so next we are going to start uh, removing these buttons here and uh, i'm going to see if i can't uh, pull my camera in a little bit here it's like i sort of knocked the thing around too it's just that we're going to try to change this to uh, get in a little bit closer. Yeah, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. All right. So it's always kind of weird when you work on one of these because things are sort of flipped. Um, so, you know, if you want to start on this one, this button here will actually be this one. I don't really worry about working it that way. Um, we're just going to start down here where things are sort of easiest to get at um and now what we're going to do is just to, to keep ourselves sane here uh is we're just going to do one button at a time uh main reason to do that is just we don't confuse what wires go where they're all are they are all color coded so it's not you know terribly difficult to do but we got green down here and green down here uh you know and it could be potentially easy to mix some of those up so we're just going to go one at a time we're going to pull these rubber uh, coatings up here. That's going to re uh, reveal the crimp on the buttons, like so. And we're just going to grab by, by the actual metal part and sort of wiggle it back and forth until it comes off. All right, there we go. And that will reveal a uh, connector for our button right there. 
Uh, now this one, there's kind of a lot of room to get at, so I'm just going to get in there with my fingers, squeeze it, and push it through. And there's our button. Pops out just like that. Pretty easy, right? So now we need one of these uh, new button housings. And I just went with black ones uh, for this because that's the color of the case. Um, but usually you can find, uh, you know, colors for your button housings to match your buttons and everything else. Pretty cool. All right, so we said we wanted to go top row green, so I'm going to get out a uh, green button here. Just like that. We're going to pull the uh, the San Wadenshi sticker off there. And now, to line one of these up, there are these little uh, tabs that poke off the side of the button. You can see right there. And those correspond... Uh, with these square cutouts uh, in the side of the button. So you want to kind of line that up, sort of eyeball it. And push it down in, and now you've got a new button. Now, when you look here uh, at the top, you can see that there are also little cutouts at the top and bottom. And we want to do the same thing we just did. We want to line up these these bits here with those and go in just like that and now you got a new custom button for your controller they're now going to hook our lines back up again um, I, I like to I prefer to grab these from the actual metal part itself And uh, you just slide it back on. And uh, I like to support the button from the bottom uh, when I do it. Sometimes it might complain a little bit. You might have to wiggle it back on. When you're done, it should look something like that. Then you just slide the uh, connector covers back down the wire and over top of the connectors. And so, uh, yeah, we're now going to repeat that process for the rest of these. You've seen me done one, or you've seen me do one, so really the rest of them are like that. Uh, the only thing that uh, can be a little tricky sometimes is getting at some of these other bits. Um, I have found that using a flathead screwdriver uh, to get down and push one side while your finger does another uh, works pretty good for getting them down in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm going to get these uh, other buttons replaced, and we'll be right back. All right, so you can see that we have replaced all of our buttons. We've got our top row of greens and our bottom row of yellows. It looks pretty cool. Now it is time to put in our new uh, Sanwa JLF joysticks. Let's go ahead and take that part off because that actually goes out here. It's a little greasy. Kind of grease that up a little bit. Uh, it's from the actual inside of the joystick. That's what that is. All right, so... Go ahead and flip this over. <clears throat> and uh, the joystick is going to go in this way with this bottom row of pins uh, on the lower left. All you have to do is set that down in there, and then uh, we're going to screw it in. Pretty straightforward. There's one. A uh, tip when you are screwing screws into plastic, uh, it's really easy to just kind of immediately go after it. And uh, eventually you can wear out um, the posts where you uh, screw things into. <clears throat> so when you're screwing into plastic, there's a little trick. I think I first heard it uh, from Bob from Metro RGB. When you put your screw in, first thing you want to do is rotate counterclockwise 
until you feel a click right there. You can even hear it. And then you rotate and you go ahead and screw it in. And that's basically going to line uh, the threads up exactly with your screw hole. Just a good, good practice to do. Same thing, so left, there's a click, and then screw it in. All right, so our joystick is now in. Pretty cool. We can even go ahead and put our, our ball on there now. Start by kind of just screwing it in. Eventually, it's going to start rotating. All right, I think we're there. So then you're going to hold that and uh, use your flathead again to uh, finish screwing that into place. All right, there's our new custom joystick. Pretty cool. All right, so now we have to hook the thing up. Now, on the old one, you can see that uh, all these wires were just soldered directly uh, onto these pins. And you could do that <laughs> with this, um, but there is an easier way. So uh, just so happened to see uh, someone was, was kind enough uh, on the, the reviews for this to post like, hey, if you want to hook these up, use one of these. It's much easier. And that was, yeah, just right there on the, uh, on the Amazon page. <clears throat> so we're going to get one of those out. And this corresponds to that same row that we were dealing with before. So before we were hooked up to these four smaller ones, we're going to hook right into this bigger one here. Just have to kind of move some stuff out of the way to get to it. Actually, I think I might come at it. All right, We're hooked up. You're going to take this and hook it onto this point here. Looks like one of them got a little bent. Shouldn't be too bad to hook in, but I believe with these, if I remember properly, you want. Uh, this side facing down. It'd be a little tricky getting in there, but just be patient. You'll get to it. All right, there we are. Yeah, so this one's bent, and that is causing a little bit of extra friction, so I'm going to try to just straighten that out real gently. There we go. Should be a little bit better. Now, if you get this in backwards, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, you'll just go to try it out, and uh, your controls will be backwards. So, like, up will be down, or right, or left, or something like that. All right, and you can see that we are now hooked up. And uh, believe it or not, it is that simple. We're actually done with the mod. That, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to test it first uh, because it just makes sense to uh, do your testing uh, before screwing your back plate back on. So let's go do that now. I almost forgot. We got to hook up the uh, power again. Remember, we took our power cable off. So let's do that real quick. All right, we're hooked back up. Now we're ready to test. All right, we're back. I had to go out and do a little uh, gardening, which is why I'm all grubby now. But we can go ahead and uh, get on with our test and see if our joystick works. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see what we get here and fire up the old super gun. Cool.
Let's see if we can't get a little direct audio in here. See if I can mix that in. Let's see what we get here. All right, there we are. Let's take that audio down just a bit. All right, now let's go ahead and see if our uh, controller works. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so our coin is going to be over here. All right, I'm just trying to figure out what my controls are here. All right, so I can see that some of this is working, but I've got some other stuff that's weird, which happens. That's no big deal. So I think the next thing we'll do is uh, go into the uh, service menu and see what we can find out. Yeah, I forgot. This is all in Japanese. Uh, I may have to use a different game to uh, look around here. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I've, I've managed to find my way uh, into the control menu, which uh, is like literally the first one uh, in the list there. And uh, I can see that it, uh, my joystick is working correctly, but uh, my button mapping is a little weird, right? So it's like A is, is button one and uh, X is button two, or in this case, it'd be X and, and square, um, which isn't quite right. But then I, I noticed, and I'll just move this window out of the way here, <clears throat> that uh my input was set in the middle here so if i drop it down to the bottom then i get button one here and button two here which just feels way better so see if we can't uh back out of this menu maybe we'll just go ahead and restart it let's do that since i can't read japanese This is a really cool CPS2 game. Got a couple years back, haven't spent a ton of time with it, but have enjoyed the time I have spent with it. Really cool game. All right, so now coin is going to be this button right here. So that's our coin button. And start is our actual start button. All right, this all makes sense now. And uh, I'm trying to play without actually looking on my CRTs here. So I have some pretty serious input delay. So don't expect me to be real good. I'm kind of playing through my OBS capture uh, right now. There's probably like two, uh, maybe a full second of uh, delay here. But yeah, we can we can totally see that uh, that this works, and, and that is what uh, we wanted to confirm. So uh, we now have a, a new tricked out uh, joystick. Looks super cool, and it's really nice and responsive. Um, in fact, we might do a little more uh, capture. I might just scoot over and play on these screens over here, and we'll make the uh, the capture window a, a little bit bigger so we can kind of see. Okay, I should be able to perform at least mildly better <laughs> with this configuration. So I can actually see what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, this, this joystick feels great.
So far, so good. All right, so when those yellow planes come through, um, you got to kill all of them, and then you get the power up. Oh, man. I think we got a submarine here torpedoing all of our ships. Another oh, battleships. All right. Oh, yeah, this joystick is great. I don't think I took a hit that whole time, and I'm not a particularly good shoot -em up player. Oh, no. Looks like our capture got a little little bouncy. Must be uh, the, the weird uh, sink from this arcade board. Um, regardless, I think, I think we got a pretty good idea of what this is, uh, what this is capable of. All right, that wraps it up for our uh, arcade stick customization. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's a great way to jump in uh, to, to get into the, the modding thing. You know, uh, it's actually really simple. Uh, like I said, I got mine from Amazon. Uh, there were links to uh, the, you know, some of the hardware that I needed, like these uh, little harnesses right on there. And then, uh, yeah, Paradise Arcade Shop. And uh, what was the other one? I always forget the name of it. Uh, Paradise Arcade Shop and Arcade Shock is where I got uh, all of my... Uh, buttons and everything so uh so yeah i had a, a lot of fun doing this today you know just a, a simple easy thing to try out for yourself um i hope you uh enjoyed uh hanging out with me today uh if you did you know i, I finally put together a um a buy me a coffee uh, and a patreon and if uh you know you like watching my videos you enjoy hanging out with me i'd always appreciate uh you know definitely a, a like and a subscription i know there's the main thing i'd really appreciate that and, and if you really thought it was great um, you know, a donation would be awesome. It just helps me pay for all of this stuff, um, you know, so I can keep making these videos. Um, and yeah, of course, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, hit me up in the comments, you know, shoot me a message. I'm always happy to talk uh, about, you know, whether it's customizing an arcade stick, you know, wrenching on old, uh, you know, video game consoles or just tech and, and retro games in general. I'm always happy to talk with you. So uh, anyway, thanks for hanging with me today and we'll catch you next time. Bye now.